Good morning, this is Kent Blaylock with SDG Bible Study. That's the Soli Deo Gloria Bible Study coming to you on this Friday morning, April 28th, 2023. Hope everyone is well, and I hope everyone is enjoying the day that God is giving us. It's rainy here in North Carolina, but we give God the glory on rainy days. Today we will continue in our reading of God's Word chronologically from the One Year Chronological Bible. Today we'll, we will spend our entirety, the entirety of our time in 2 Samuel. We'll be, we'll be in chapters 15, chapter 16, and parts of chapter 17, verse, verses 1 through 14. So join me this morning as we continue in our reading of God's Word. Second Samuel chapter 15. After this, Absalom got himself a chariot and horses and 50 men to run before him. And Absalom used to rise early and stand beside the way of the gate. And when any man had a dispute to come before the king for judgment, Absalom, Absalom would call to him and say, From what city are you? And when he said, Your servant is of such and such a tribe in Israel, Absalom, Absalom would say to him, See, your claims are good and right, but there is no man designated by the king to hear you. Then Absalom would say, Oh, that I were judge in the land. Then every man with a dispute or cause might come to me, and I would give him justice. And whenever... A man came near to pay homage to him. He would put, put out his hand and take hold of him and kiss him. Thus Absalom did to all of Israel who came to the king for judgment. So Absalom stole the hearts of the men of Israel. And at the end of four years, Absalom said to the king, Please let me go and pay my vow, which I have vowed to the Lord in Hebron. For your servant vowed a vow while I lived at Geshur and Aram, saying, if the Lord will indeed bring me back to Jerusalem, then I will offer worship to the Lord. The king said to him, Go in peace. So he arose and went to Hebron. But Absalom sent secret messengers throughout all the tribes of Israel, saying, As soon as you hear the sound of the trumpet, then say, Absalom is king at Hebron. With Absalom went 200 men from Jerusalem who were invited guests, and they went in their innocence and knew nothing. And while Absalom was offering the sacrifices, he sent to Ahithophel, the Gileonite, David's counselor from his city Gilo, and the conspiracy grew strong, and the people with Absalom kept increasing. And a messenger came to David saying, the hearts of the men of Israel have gone after Absalom. Then David said to all his servants who were with him at Jerusalem, Arise and let us flee, or else there will be no escape for us from Absalom. Go quickly, lest he overtake us quickly and bring down ruin on us and strike the city with the edge of the sword. And the king's servants said to the king, Behold, your servants are ready to do whatever my lord the king decides. So the king went out and all his household after him. And the king left ten concubines to keep the house. And the king went out, and all the people after him, and they halted at the last house. And all his servants passed by him, and all the Carathites, and all the Peleathites, and all the six hundred Gittites who had followed him from Gath passed on before the king. Then the king said to Ittai the Gittite, Why do you... Why do you also go with us go back and stay with the king for you're a foreigner and also an exile from from your home you came only yesterday and shall i today make you wander about with us since i go i know not where go back and take your brothers with you and may the lord show steadfast love and faithfulness to you but ittai answered the king as the lord lives and as my lord the king lives Wherever my lord the king shall be, whether for death or for life, there also will, be, will your servant be. And David said to Ittai, Go then, pass on. So Ittai the Gittite passed on with all his men and all the little ones who were with him. 
And all the land wept aloud as all the people passed by. And the king crossed the brook, brook Kidron. And all the people passed on toward the wilderness. And Abiathar came up. And behold, Zadok came also with all the Levites, bearing the ark of the covenant of God. And they set down the ark of God until the people had all passed out of the city. Then the king said to Zadok, Carry the ark of God back into the city. If I, find, if I find favor in the eyes of the Lord, he will bring me back and let me see both it and his dwelling place. But if he says, I have no pleasure in you, behold, here I am. Let him do to me what seems good to him. The king also said to Zadok the priest, Are you not a seer? Go back to the city in peace with your two sons, Ahiamez your son and Jonathan the son of Abiathar. See, I will wait at the fords of the wilderness until word comes from you to inform me. So Zadok and Abiathar carried the ark of God back to Jerusalem, and they remained there. But David went up the ascent of the Mount of Olives, weeping as he went, barefoot and with his head covered. And all the people who, who were with him covered their heads, and they went up weeping as they went. And it was told David, Ahithophel is among the conspirators with Absalom. And David said, O Lord, please turn the counsel of, an, of, Ahithophel, of Ahithophel into foolishness. While David was coming to the summit where God was worshipped, behold, Hushai the archite came to meet him with his coat torn and dirt on his head. David said to him, If you go with me, you will be a burden to me. But if you return to the city, to the city and say to Absalom, I will be your servant, O king, as I have been your father's servant in time past. So now I will be your servant. Then you will defeat for me the counsel of Ahithophel. Are not Zadok and Abiathar the priests with you there? So whatever you hear from the king's house, tell it to Zadok and Abiathar the priests. Behold, there's their two sons are with them there, Ahimez, Zadok's son, and Jonathan, Abiathar's son. And by them you shall send to me everything you hear. So Hushai, David's friend, came into the city just as Absalom was entering Jerusalem. Second Samuel chapter 16. When David had passed a little beyond the summit, Ziba, the son of Mephibosheth, met him with a couple of donkeys saddled, bearing 200 loaves of bread, 100 bunches of raisins, 100 of summer fruits, and a skin of wine. And the king said to Ziba, Why have you brought these? Ziba answered, The donkeys are for the king's household to ride on, the bread and summer fruit for the young men to eat, and the wine for those who faint in the wilderness to drink. And the king said, And where is your master's son? Ziba said to the king, Behold, he remains in Jerusalem. For he said, Today the house of Israel will give me back the kingdom of my father. Then the king said to Ziba, Behold, all that belonged to Mephibosheth is now yours. And Ziba said, I pay homage. Let me ever find favor in your sight, my lord, the king. When King David came to Bahur, Bahur, Bahurim, there came out a man of the family of the house of Saul, whose name was Shimea, the son of Gera. And as he came, he cursed continually. And he threw stones at David and at all the servants of King David and all the people. And all the mighty men were on his right hand and on his left. And Shimea said as he cursed, Get out, get out, you man of blood, you worthless man. The Lord has avenged on you all the blood of the house of Saul, in whose place you have reigned. And the Lord has given the kingdom into the hand of your son Absalom. See, your evil is on you, for you are a man of blood. Then Abishai, the son of Uriah, said to the king, Why should this dead dog curse my lord the king? Let me go over and take off his head. But the king said, What have I to do with you, you sons of Uriah? If he is cursing because the Lord has said to me, Curse David, who then shall say, Why have you done so? And David said to Abiasha and to all his servants, Behold, my own son seeks my life. How much more now may this Benjamin, 
Benjaminite. Leave him alone and let him curse, for the Lord has told, told him to. It may be that the Lord will look on the wrong done to me and that the Lord will repay me with good for his cursing today. So David and his men went on the road while Shimea went along on the hillside opposite him and cursed as he went and threw stones at him and flung dust. And the king and all the people who were with him arrived weary at the Jordan. And there he refreshed himself. Now Absalom and all the people, the men of Israel, came to Jerusalem and Ahithophel with him. And when Hushai the archite, David's friend, came to Absalom, Hushai said to Absalom, Long live the king, long live the king. And Absalom said to Hushai, Is this your loyalty to your friend? Why did you not go with your friend? And Hushai said to Absalom, No, for whom the Lord and this people and all the men of Israel have chosen, his I will be, and with him I will remain. And again, whom should I serve? Should it not be his son? As I have served your father, so I will serve you. Then Absalom said to, to Ahithophel, Give your counsel, what shall we do? Ahithophel said to Absalom, Go into your father's concubine, con, con, concubines, whom he has left to keep the house, and all Israel will hear that you have made yourself a stench to your father, and the hands of all who are with you will be strengthened. So they pitched a tent for Absalom on the roof, and Absalom went in to his father's concubines in the sight of all Israel. Now in those days the counsel that Ahithophel gave was as if one consulted the word of God. So was all the counsel of Ahithophel esteemed, both by David and by Absalom. Second Samuel chapter 17 verses 1 through 14. Moreover, Ahithophel said to Absalom, Let me choose twelve thousand men, and I will arise and pursue David tonight. I will come upon him while he is weary and discouraged and throw him into a panic, and all the people who are with him will flee. I will strike, strike down only the king, and I will bring all the people back to you as a bride comes home to her husband. You seek the life of only one man, and all the people will be at peace. And the advice seemed right in the eyes of Absalom and all the elders of Israel. Then Absalom said, Call Hushai the archite also, and let us hear what he has to say. And when Hushai came to Absalom, Absalom said to him, Thus has Ahithophel spoken, shall we do as he says? If not, you speak. Then Hushai said to Absalom, This time the counsel that Ahithophel has given is not good. Hushai said, You know that your father and his men are mighty men, and that they are enraged like a bear robbed of her cubs in the field. Besides, your father is expert in war. He will not spend the night with the people. Behold, even now he has hidden himself in one of the pits or in some other place. And as soon as some of the people fall, fall at the first attack, whoever hears it will say, There has been a slaughter among the people who follow Absalom. Then even the valiant men whose heart is like the heart of a lion will utterly melt with fear. For all Israel knows that your father is a mighty man and that those who are with him are valiant men. But my counsel is that all Israel be gathered to you from Dan to Beersheba as a sand by the sea for multitude and that you go to battle in person. So we shall come upon him in some place where he is to be found and we shall light upon him as the dew falls on the ground. And of him and all the men with him, not one will be left. If he withdraws into a city, then all Israel will bring ropes to that city. And we shall drag it unto, into the valley until not even a pebble is to be found there. And Absalom and all the men of Israel said, The counsel of Hushai the archite is better than the counsel of Ahithophel. For the Lord had ordained to defeat the good counsel of Ahithophel, so the Lord might bring harm upon Absalom. And that will conclude our reading from Second Samuel this morning as we've read the conspiracy of Absalom, how he turned the hearts of the men of Israel to himself. 
Now David has fled, and now we have turmoil in the house of David, as uh, God had told him he would, because of his sin against Bathsheba and Uriah the Hittite. Someone within his own home has risen up against him. God's word is true. God keeps the word that he proclaims. He's always true. I hope you enjoyed this reading. I hope you are blessed by it. I hope you have a good day today. Enjoy the day that God has given us. Give him the glory in it. Solely, Deo Gloria.